Hey, thanks for tuning in to hear this week's newest message. We love to hear how God is using this ministry to impact lives. And if you have a story to share, please do so by logging on to rescuechurch.org and let us know. And if God has used this ministry to impact your life, we invite you to partner with us financially so that we can continue to spread the message of the gospel all around the world. Now get ready as Pastor Paul shares a word from our new series, My Best Year Yet. church this morning. Come on, somebody. How many of y'all believe God really has greater things in store for your life? Come on. I believe God's got greater things in store for us as a church. I believe God's got greater things in store for your marriage. I believe God's got greater things in store for your family. I believe he's got greater things in store for your finances. I, I, I receive that. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He wants to do greater things in 2018. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? Amen, amen. Well, I want you to just go ahead and fist bump your neighbor or just give him a high five, whatever's easier for you, and just let him know. Say, say, this is my best year yet. Say, this is my best year yet. Tell him, it's my best year yet. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. How many guys know we're going to continue to declare that all year long? Come on, somebody. Now, now I, I want to just open up with just a few things before I dive or delve into the word and dive into the message I just want to oh, just share my heart for a moment I, I feel it's important for a pastor to do that can I do that amen and I, I just want to share a few things just from my heart for a moment I want you to know something that uh, um, I, I want y'all to know I, I want to take off right this morning I, I want to feel the presence of God in this place how many already feel the presence of God up in here but I want you to know that, that this isn't just a catchphrase I want, I want you to own it. Can I get an amen? And so what I'm trying to say is that when I say it's my best year yet, it's going to be my best year yet. Listen, I want you to know, I'm going to declare it, but I'm also going to wear it. Come on, somebody. And so, and so I want you to know, listen to me, this is a year. This is a year where, listen to me, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to draw closer to God, not drift from God. Are y'all hearing me? This, this is a year I believe God's going to elevate my life. And if he's going to elevate me, how many of you guys know? I've got to step forward and step up, not back. If I want to advance, listen to me. How many of you guys know that means I've got to what? Step forward so I don't move backward. Amen. God doesn't want us to moonwalk this year. Come on, somebody. Amen. He wants us to step forward. And so if I want to move forward in God, I'm going to have to step forward in God. If I want to go up in God, then I'm going to have to step upward in God. Can I get an amen? That's how it's going to be your best year yet. Because you're getting closer to Him. And the closer you are to Jesus, how many of you guys know the better life is? Y'all were shouting earlier. I'm going to say that again. The closer you are to Jesus, the better life is. It's just better with Jesus. Amen. It's just better with Jesus. And so, so I also want to, I want to point this out to you too, just, just for fun and speaking my heart. This year, I am believing. I am believing. Number one, I am believing for divine connections. And we're talking about resolutions. If I had to give you my top two resolutions, number one would be I want to get closer to Jesus. It means I want to have a stronger relationship with the Lord. And number two would be if nobody else does, I still will. Come on, somebody. But this year, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing that we are going to build a new impact facility. It's, I am, I am declaring it. I am saying it boldly. I am saying it by faith. 
And I am declaring it, and I believe it's going to manifest this year. It shall come to pass, and we will build a building. Can I get an amen? Now, last Sunday, we didn't take up a special offering. We gave one away. At the very end of the service, I gave an offering away. I didn't ask you to put anything in. I asked you to pull something out. Why? Because when you give, it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Amen. And so, listen to me. We're going to continue to sow, and I believe we're going to see things grow. Amen. But I want you to know, I want you to look at this building forward, dude, because listen to me. We are about to break 100,000. After last Sunday, we did the numbers. We are right at, you would say, how, how can it go up? Because how many of you guys know that's called God's crazy math? You gave something away, yeah, but now it's being given back. And I'm, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing by the end of the month that we're going to break 100,000. Come on, somebody, join with me. Amen. I believe it shall come to pass. And then we're going to go get the money and we're going to build a building to reach the next generation. And when you're reaching the next generation, you are building forward. Can I get an amen? Amen. So I, I just spoke my heart every Sunday. I'll give you little snippets. And so I'm, I'm going to utilize my time because I don't have much time left to get into the message this morning. How many of y'all ready to receive? Tell your neighbor I'm ready to receive. Tell your other neighbor, it's my best year yet. It's my best year yet. This year will be my best year yet. It will be. I believe this year, listen to me, church, I believe this year will be my best year financially, relationally, physically, and spiritually. I believe my best days are ahead of me, not behind me. Come on, somebody, can I get an amen? I believe there's still greater things God wants to do in my life. Come on, somebody. I still believe there's more battles to be won. Come on, can I get an amen? I really believe with all my heart that there are better moments of my life to be lived out. And I believe there's more of God's blessings and promises He wants me to experience in 2018. I don't know about you, I receive it. Tell your neighbor, declare it and wear it. You got to declare and wear it. I'm going to say it, and I'm going to live like it's already coming to pass. Can I get an amen? So every day I wake up, I have something to be excited about. That God is going to do a new thing in my life in this new year. I'm excited, and I'm expecting. Tell your neighbor, I'm expecting. I'm expecting for God to do something new in me. New in my home, new in our church, new in my life every single day of this year. Can I get an amen? I believe God can make all things new. Every day he can make all things new, but that means I'm going to have to give him all of me. Remember, if we want more of him, we've got to give him more of us. And if I want him to make all things new, then I've got to give him more of me, not less of me. And I'm going to give him more of me in 2018. I'm going to give him more of me. Maybe there's some areas, listen to me, in your life that you haven't given God everything yet. And, and how many of you guys know, we, 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 I love you, but we can come to church and put a mask on. We can go home and even hide it. Yes, Lord's blessing me. Oh, God's blessing me. And you don't even really feel blessed. And I'm glad you're saying it by faith. But listen to me, church. God truly wants you to experience and encounter his blessings. But if it's not working, you need to look in the mirror of his word and let him speak to you and show you what adjustments you need to make. Because I don't know about you, I want to learn from last year so I don't walk in what I did last year so I can walk in something new this year. And so God can take me further, so God can take me upward, so God can help me advance, so God can help me to be a better man, so God can help me be a better husband, so God can help me to be a better leader. Help me to be a better pastor. Help me to be a better dad. Help me be a, be a better man in every area of my life. Hallelujah. 
I don't want to be who I was who I was last year. Why? Because I believe God can do a new thing. How many of y'all believe God can do a new thing? Listen to me, you will receive what you expect. And you've got to expect greater things. Tell your neighbor, I'm expecting greater things. I'm expecting greater things for this church. I said, I'm expecting greater things for this church. And, and listen to me for the new who may be in the room. When I say this church, I'm not talking about the building, though we are going to continue to build and not maintain. But I'm talking about the people. And I'm expecting for God to do greater things in your life. That's why it's going to be your best year yet. How many of y'all receive that? How many of y'all really receive it? Come on. You got you to gotta want it. Pastor, why are you stirring us up? Because you got to want it. You got to want it. You, you can't step out into the new year just slowly moving out. Oh, I'm going to come to church. Here I am, Lord, use me. No, you got to get up saying, I'm expecting for God to do a new thing. God is going to touch my life. I'm jumping out of the chute, and I'm ready to receive all that you have for me today, Lord. Amen. Life is not supposed to be boring. Amen. Life is not supposed to be boring. You're supposed to get up expecting. Well, my, my, you don't understand. I'm dealing with health symptoms. But you know what? Get up saying that Christ is your healer. I'm dealing with circumstances you, nobody could understand. Yes, God understands. And he is a God who can turn your circumstances around. So get up expecting that he's turning it around. Maybe it isn't happening with the first step or the second step, but sooner or later, you're going to step into breakthrough. Sooner or later, you're going to step into a miracle. Sooner or later, you're going to get what you've been believing God for because you are expecting greater things in 2018. Can I get an amen? Woo! And everything I'm sharing with you right now is surely what's on my heart. It's truly what's on my heart for this church. I really believe we had an awesome five-year anniversary last year. And I'll be totally honest with you, it's probably one of the best services I've ever sat in in my life. And I'm not saying it just because it's our church. I really believe the presence of God showed up. I really believe life change was revealed. I really believe that people saw God's goodness. And I really believe people got to taste and see that He is good. And I believe it instilled hope into people that God can still do it for me. Can I get an amen? If God could heal their marriage, God can heal mine. If God could heal Miss Becky, God can heal me. If God can straighten out their kids, He can straighten out mine. Amen. But listen to me, and, and it was awesome, but I believe that we have crossed over into 2018. And I believe when we've crossed over, not only did we transition into a new year, but I believe that we just shifted gears. I believe we, we hit first, second, third, fifth. I believe we're shifting into another gear. We're shifting into another gear in the new year. Are y'all hearing me? And I believe, listen to me, as we shift into the new gear, how many guys know the bigger the gear, the faster you begin to travel? I believe that as we shift in the new year, we've shifted into a new gear, and we're going to begin to see some things manifest quicker in 2018. How, how many of y'all are hearing me? This is prophetic. Are y'all hearing me? This is prophetic. It has, as we shift gears, but listen to me. Listen to me. J just because you feel the sudden impact, listen to me. Don't let that cause you to get your eyes off of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, all eyes on him. Keep your eyes on him. And that sudden jolt you see, that, that's, that's the supernatural power of God accelerating you because you've just made a shift into something that would have taken longer in 2017. Now it's going to come to pass quicker in 2018. For some of y'all aren't getting me, listen to me, I'm going to break it down, make it simplified. God is not, listen to me, God is not, number one, he, time doesn't limit our God. 
God is the creator of time. So if God wants to speed things up, he can. You and I only have 24 hours in a day, and that's what we got to work with. With God, how many of you guys know he has eternity? He's limitless, and God can speed things up supernaturally. And I believe 2018 is going to be a year that God's going to speed things up supernaturally. Can I get an amen? Tell your neighbor, it's my best year yet. It's my best year yet. So my best days, what, are ahead of me, not behind me. Your best days are ahead of you, not behind you. And I'm going to read to you what, what, what's, what it says in Haggai 2.9. I love it. And you guys have heard me read this before. And it's powerful. Every year I love to read this. And it just speaks to me. Something fresh and new every year. And this is what the Lord gave me because I was asking him, you know, what to open with. I do. I, I actually pray about just scriptures. I ask the Lord to reveal it to me. And it says this. The future glory of this temple will be greater than its past glory. The future glory, the future glory of this temple, the future glory of your life, the future glory of this church, the future glory, come on somebody, of your marriage, the future glory of your finances, are y'all hearing me, will be greater than the past glory. Amen. It may have been good last year, but this year it's going to get better. Come on, amen. How many of y'all will receive that? Now, I can tell you this, I'm probably not, we have communion today. I'm probably not going to get done with this message, but how many guys know it's okay? It just leaves us hungry for more next Sunday. Can I get an amen? Watch this. The future glory of this temple will be greater than its past glory, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Now, watch this. And in this place, somebody underline place in your Bible. And in this place, I will bring peace. And in this place I will bring peace. I, the Lord of heaven armies, have spoken. God is saying that he will bring peace to your life so your life will be better and better and better and better and better in 2018. Amen. That means he wants to bring peace to your home to make your marriage better. Are y'all hearing me? He wants to bring peace to your job to make work life better. He wants to bring peace, come on somebody, to your bank account to make your financial life better. Come on, hallelujah. He wants to bring peace to your life to make living life better. Can I get an amen? In this place, I will bring peace. There are places in our life that we need God's peace to show up. And I don't know about you, I'm receiving that. That this year, I'm going to have a peace. I'm going to have a peace. I'm not going to stress out. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to, oh, God, how's this going to happen? How's this going to work out? I'm going to have peace. Because God said he will bring peace to this place. Bring peace to me. He's going to bring peace. It's all going to work out. And I'm going to live life with peace. And even if... I don't see it happen tomorrow or next week or the following. I would rather live in peace expecting for greater than to live in worry expecting nothing. Are y'all hearing me? And it hasn't come to pass yet, Patrick. It hasn't come to pass. Let's be, don't take it up with me. Take it up with God. And you're complaining to everybody on Facebook. You're telling everybody else about it. No, 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 no. He will bring peace. And you need to rest in that peace. Can I get an Amen. And I, hear, I already hear, I already hear this. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and say, I told you I'm going to take my time this morning. Can I get an amen? I, I can already hear people say, well, I, I get plenty of rest. I get a lot of sleep. I, I, I sleep. they got teenagers. My teenagers get a lot of sleep. They sleep until noon. That will give me a chance to sleep a little longer. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. You, know, you, you may get some sleep, but did you get sweet sleep? Because you can have sleep, you can get sleep, you can pop a pill and it'll knock you out. You'd be sleeping, but you didn't get rest. Why? Because your body's out, but your mind's not. 
even while you're sleeping, you, you how many of you guys know you you could be you could be having nightmares. Even while you're you say, well, I'm sleeping. Yeah, but all you're doing is worrying while you're asleep. So your body got rest, but your mind didn't. Y'all are not hearing me up in here. This is good stuff. You need to pray that God will give you sweet sleep at night. So your mind, everything, every part of you gets rest. And when you really get rest, even in the mind, how many of you guys know you wake up feeling blessed and refreshed? And I, I pray that often, even, even as a pastor, because there's so many different things. I, 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 I will say this that I get to hear. There's so many things I get to hear sometimes. I'm like, Lord, you know, thank you for letting me hear. But I don't always want to hear it, but... I get to hear it, and, and listen to me, I go tonight, listen to me, I don't, I don't go to sleep at night thinking about all those things. If I did, how many guys know my body might get some sleep, but my mind didn't get any rest? And so listen to me, I ask the Lord, give me sweet sleep tonight. And Lord, I'm going to give that all to you. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to feel refreshed, and I'm going to feel blessed. Why? Because God's peace guarded my heart and mind while I slept. And how many guys know when he brings you peace, you will have sweet sleep? Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody. It's a good little side note. Amen. 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 So I really believe this with all my heart, church. I really believe that God wants this year to be better than last year. I believe he wants your future to be better than your past. And so I want to show you something in Jeremiah 29, 11. It says this. And I really, this is awesome. This is just one of those scriptures that I love to pull out oh, when, when the timing is right. And I just feel like it's now, especially with the new year. I love Jeremiah 29, 11, And it says this, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of what? Thoughts of peace, not of evil. Did y'all hear that? Thoughts of peace, not of evil. How many guys know nightmares aren't from God? Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. See, God is saying this, and, and y'all hear me out. God is saying this, that he already has thoughts, or he has already thought out, or you could say it this way. He has already planned out a better year for you in 2018. Not an evil one, but a good one. He's already planned out a better year for you in 2018. Now, listen to me. Now you choose. Tell your neighbor you got to choose. You got to choose to live life your way in 2018 or live life his way. Listen to me. You, you, you can do it your way and maybe have some success, but how many guys know when you do it God's way, Listen to me, it not only brings you rewards or success, how many guys do it takes you to another level? Can I get an amen? And it, it is something that, listen to me, you didn't do based on your ability. It's something only God could do because he has done it through you. And I don't know about you, in 2018, I want to see what the Lord can do through me. Am I the only one in this church? I want to see what the Lord can do through me. I want to live out what God has already prepared and planned for me in 2018. I want every step I take to be ordered of the Lord. I want God to be the one that is leading me by the power of His Spirit and His Word. Every single day, I want to know that God is by my side, that He will not leave me or forsake me, that if God is with me, who can be against me? And I know that my God has greater things in store for my life. Can I get an amen? Amen. Greater things are yet to come. I said greater things are yet to come. Greater things are yet to come. But I can't just do Paul. I've got to do God. I can't just do what I think is good. I need to do what God says is good. Did y'all hear that? So many times, I'm, I'm going to give you this one little story. Some of you already heard it. 
I can, I can tell you this. I wouldn't be standing here today pastoring Rescue Church if I would have did it my way. Y'all know the song, I did it my way. Listen to me, don't let that be your theme song this year. You will be in a lot of trouble. And you will miss out on God's best for your life. You will miss out on God's better for your life. Because he's already pre- prepared some things that, that he wants you to walk in. Some things he wants you to step in in 2018. But you will miss it if you do it your way. Are y'all hearing me? And listen, once again, this is a pastor's heart. I'm speaking to the church. I'm talking to you. And I will tell you this. I would have missed out on where I'm standing today if I would have did it my way. I, right now, right now, I, 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 and some of y'all know this, when I was a youth pastor, I, I was offered a large sum of money for ministry. I was offered a, a, to go to a big church in Oklahoma. And I was offered to go there for a large sum of money. And, and, and not only that, I, I love what was happening there. I saw fruit there. There was good things happening. There was growth there. The youth group that we would have taken over was, was already at six, 700 people. It was 500 plus. All these things look good and they look tempting. How many guys know that was a good thing but not necessarily a God thing? And if I would have did it my way, I would have gone. And I wouldn't be here today. And to be truthful, I wouldn't even be there anymore because all the leadership's changed. The same people there aren't there, so I might not have been there. See, there's so many things we can miss out on if we do it our way. But I did it God's way, and I went to him in prayer, and did you argue with him, Pastor? Yes, a little bit. I did a little bit. I'll be totally honest with you. I wanted something new. And how many of you guys know when you want something new, sometimes you want it now? And when we want the new now, and God says, I'm going to do new, but you need to wait on me. How many of you guys know that's faith? That's trust. That's faithfulness. It's everything God looks for. And I had, I had to get into my prayer closet several times and, and I was blessed to have a good support, my wife to tell me, you need to make sure it's God and I'm grateful for that, can I get an amen woman got a lot of power over man I'm so grateful that she hears from God too and, and I got into my prayer closet and God told me he said, no, he said, I need you to stay because I've opened a door of opportunity that I need you to hasn't happened. How many guys, he said he opened it, and I'm about to walk through it, but I didn't know when. In my mind, I'm going, yeah, I know, I know, I just got the phone call, let me go. That would have been a good thing, but not a God thing, and I'm glad I waited on the Lord. Listen to me, church, this is a word for you. God is going to do a new thing, but sometimes you may have to wait for a moment. But while you're waiting, listen to me, don't worry. While you're waiting, don't doubt. While you're waiting, listen to me, let him bring you peace. Let him bring you comfort. Let him, listen to me, just overwhelm you with this goodness. And how many of you guys know you will begin to expect and believe that God is about to bring it to pass? And even, love me, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I had a peace that I knew God told me not to take it. I had a peace. And I'll be honest with you, without the peace, I don't know if I would have stayed. And I want you to know God's going to bring you peace. And when you have the peace, you need to yield to that peace. Let the peace guide you. Because sometimes when you can't hear from God, how many of you guys know he leads us through peace? And I followed the peace. And how many of you guys know the peace led me here? That's why I could stand before you today and say I am your pastor at Rescue Church simply because God is the one who did it, not me. Can I get an amen? And I want you to know God is going to lead you to greater things in 2018. It isn't just for me. He's no respecter of persons. God is already, listen to me, he's already commissioned 
angels to go forth and, and carry out the petition of your prayers. God is already, listen to me, standing up in heaven and saying, I want to bring it to pass. I just need you to follow my peace, to follow me. Amen. And I will lead you to greater things. Can I get an amen? Whoo, it's good stuff. Amen. But how many of you guys know? It's a choice. Tell your neighbor it's a choice. The choice is yours. You can choose to do it your way, or you can choose to do it God's way. And how about you? I'm going to do it God's way. Even when I don't understand it, I'm going to choose to do it God's way. Even when my flesh, how many God knows, is telling me something else, I'm still going to do it God's way. Even when some haters will tell me not to do that, I'm going to do it God's way. Can I get an amen? I'm going to do it God's way. So this morning, I want to talk to you about this. The choice is yours. Tell your neighbor, the choice is yours. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Watch this. Number one. Number one. This may sound familiar to some of the men in this room, but this is, this is a little different. And let me just share this with you. Remember, the choice is yours. Tell your neighbor, the choice is yours. We've got to grasp this. The choice is yours. How many guys know God gives us a choice? You have the power to choose. The choice is yours. Listen to me, love me, love me. And I know this sounds a little rough and tough, but listen to me, it's tough love. And I want you to know something. Listen to me, you are where you are today and you are who you are today because of the choices you made yesterday. Don't blame God. I said, don't blame God. Y'all ain't hearing me up in here. You have a choice. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Do it God's way. Can I get an amen? So watch this. Number one, the choices you make today can't change your past, but they can change your tomorrow. Did y'all hear that? I said, the choices you make today can't change your past, but they can change your tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Watch this. Give me, let me give it to you. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I think I'm just glad to preach it to you. I think y'all want, want some energy this morning. Amen. Watch this. It says this. Today I've given you the choice. Y'all need to underline that, highlight, highlight that, whatever kind of Bible you got. Today I've given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call heaven and earth as a witness. Woo. To witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose what? Life. So that you and your descendants might live. Amen. God even tells you what to choose. I don't know about you. I love it when people give me the answers. <laughs> How many of you guys know he always, always gives us the answers? Can I get an amen? But it's up to us to choose to follow them. Amen. It's good stuff. You have the power to choose to do things that make, listen to me. You have the power to choose to do things that make life better or worse in 2018. I'm going to say that again. You have the power. Are y'all hearing me? You have the power to choose to make things better or worse in 2018. I don't know about you. If I do it God's way, I believe they're going to get better. I said if I do it God's way, I believe they're going to get better. Come on, somebody. Amen. If I do it my way, maybe, maybe not. But God's way, it's a guarantee. Can I get an amen? It doesn't mean hell won't come against me, but it does mean when hell does, God will stand in the middle. And he said, if you want to get to them, you got to go through me, baby. Amen. But if I do it my way, I may, I may pull away from God. But when I do it his way, how many guys know I get closer to God? And I love you. I love you. And you may want to dab a little bit into doing it your way, but I want you to know something. You better quit dabbling in that. Because you might one day dabble a little too close to the edge and fall off. Are y'all hearing me? You want to do it God's way. When you do it God's way, how many guys know life is just better? It's just, it is. It's just better. It's just better. But you have the power to choose. I said you have the power to choose. Amen. I, I am, I'm going to say this. I am so grateful that I chose to do it God's way. Richie, Don, y'all can laugh if you want to on this, but I, when, I, when I first started coming to church here, I sat in the sound booth, I had so many people. I was single. People thought I was Italian. 
do got a little bit of Italian in me, but anyways. And, and listen to me, I, I had people trying to choose my spouse for me. And I mean, they, they offered money. They offered me a trip to Hawaii. True story. I paid for your trip to Hawaii if you would date my daughter. And I, I had all kind of things thrown at me. How many of you guys know, listen to me, you can't let other people choose for you. And listen to me, I had a choice to do it their way, to do it my flesh's way, because my flesh, that looked good. You mean I get money and I get to date your daughter? Whoa, this sounds like a good package. And a Hawaii trip, awesome. No, 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 no. But I didn't want to do it my way or their way. I wanted to do it God's way. And when I was offered that, I didn't have a peace about it. I had no peace. How many guys, when you don't have peace about something, don't you do it? Tell your neighbor, don't you do it? Don't you do it? Don't you? You have a choice. I said, you have a choice. And how many guys know when you when you do it your way? How many guys know you make one mistake and then another mistake and then another mistake? Well, Pastor, I just went out to eat with him, but then why did you invite him to your home? Well, you know, we were just gonna talk and have coffee. We were gonna do Bible study. <laughs> then how did you end up in the room? Well, the Bible says be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> that is not what he meant. You chose that. I said, you chose that. And then you want to blame the devil. The devil made me do it. No, he tempted you. But you chose it. You have the power to choose. Tell your neighbor the choice is yours. The choice is yours. It's yours. It's yours. I don't know about you. I want to choose to do things that make life better, not worse. So listen to me. You can choose. Remember, I said the choices you make today can't change your past, but they can change your tomorrow. So you could choose to focus on your past mistakes or focus on God's present and future promises. You could choose to live like your past or you could choose to learn from your past. You could choose to dwell on the hard times in life or you could choose to dwell on the good times in life. And I don't know about you, I've, there's, there are good times. Can I get an amen? You could choose to talk about the challenges we have in America today or you can choose to pray for America and make a difference. Can I get an amen? It's good stuff. Amen. Tell your neighbor the choice is yours. Now watch this. Watch this. Y'all have heard me share something like this before. Listen to me. You always, you always, somebody say always. This is how powerful choice is. You always, listen to me, you always have the choice always have the choice between two realities the positive or the negative you always have a choice between two realities the positive or the negative the choice listen to me the reality you choose is the reality you will experience did y'all hear that you always have a choice between two realities the negative and the positive the reality you choose is the reality you will experience. God, y'all, did y'all get that? That was so good. My goodness. I don't know if everybody in the room is getting it. Do I need to say this in Espanol? <laughs> if I say it in Espanol, it'll sound like tongue, so I better not. Amen. Someone will have to interpret. Honey, Amen. She told me to say it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I know you told me not to. Even. <laughs> so listen to me. Watch this. Remember, the reality you choose is the reality you will experience. So you have a choice. You can choose to forgive your spouse. It's positive. 
That's also godly. Or you can choose to fight with your spouse. Come on, somebody. You can choose, watch this, you can choose to stay planted in church. Oh, you know, I'm going to throw that in there. Or you can choose to church hop. But if you stay planted, how many guys know you grow? If you church hop, you never get planted and you never grow. See, a lot of people church hop because they want to be entertained. You only get planted when you want to go from entertainment to an encounter. Are you hearing me? If the preacher isn't saying something that tickles my ears, then I need to go somewhere else because, listen to me, they're not obviously in tune with God or they're not preaching deep enough. Is it really the preacher or is it you? Because if you expect to hear from God, you will receive a word from God. The Bible says even out of the mouth of babes we can receive. I've I've had I've had kids minister to me in this church. I've walked down the hall and had and had I have Shannon where your little girl that little girl says something and she goes off to preach and I'm like, little girl. Like, where'd you get this stuff? Out of the mouth of babes. I can still receive a word from heaven. better get off that subject amen so the reality you choose is the reality you will experience how many guys know you can choose friends that will strengthen you in the faith or you can choose friends that will weaken you in the faith listen you need to hang around people that listen to me don't cause you to doubt your faith you need to hang around people that, that encourage you and they fire you up. And when you get around them, all of a sudden you're like, wow, man, I don't know. But when I'm around you, I feel like I can go out and conquer the world. Amen. I like being around people like that. I love being around positive people. I love being around faith people. Come on, somebody. Why? Because they they can influence you to make good choices or bad choices. Are y'all hearing me? Tell your neighbor, the choice is yours. It's your choice. It's your choice. Amen. Now, I'm just going to say this one little last thought. Remember, the reality you choose is the reality you experience. How many of you guys want to make better choices in the new year? A few of y'all. How many of y'all want to make better choices in 2018? Come on. I'm not here to entertain you. I've, I've already spoken prophetically several times. You need to catch it. You need to receive it. Can I get an amen? Listen to me. I, I want to make better choices in 2018. Because how many of you guys know if I choose well, I'll live well? Amen. And this will be my best year yet. If I make better choices in 2018, amen. And so listen to me, you can choose. You can choose to live like the world or you can choose to live like Jesus. You can choose to walk with people in the world or you can choose to walk with people who love Jesus. You can choose to draw closer to Jesus or you can choose to drift away from Jesus. The truth is, watch this, and this is where I'm going to close. The truth is, you're as only as close to God as you choose to be. I know that was loaded. You're only as close to God as you choose to be. The choice is yours. Amen. I, I got this awesome new smart TV for for Christmas. That was my Christmas gift this year. I've been wanting it for about three years, and I finally got it this year. It's my best year yet. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And I told Brian and I told my wife, what was I thinking? I should have got a smart TV years ago. What am I doing? I'm paying too much for I won't say who, but my goodness, I should have got a smart TV years ago. I absolutely love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And I'm an Amazon Prime member, so it really works out good for me. Hallelujah. Amazon, I threw that in for you. Amen. I get a discount. I got this smart TV and it's so cool and, I, and we put it up and everything and I just love this thing. Absolutely love it, love it, love it. And I got this cool remote and I love this remote because this remote talks to everything. I mean, I just love it. It's a smart remote too. Amen. You get the smart TV and the smart remote. And it, it's talking and everything. We finally figured it out and I'm like, man, I love this thing. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. But, but I noticed one thing. I noticed one thing that I noticed if I got too far back from the TV, it wouldn't work. Or I should say this the signal got weak. But the closer I got to the source, the closer I got to the source, how many guys know the better the remote worked? The closer your life is to Jesus, how many guys know the signal begins to strengthen? You begin to hear from God at another level. And things to begin to function like they're supposed to function. Hallelujah. And it's a better life. But one other thing that, that, I, that I failed to tell you was this, that there was this little clear plastic thing over the front of it. And on my remote, you can talk to it. You can push a button and you can talk to the remote and just say channel 342. Boom, it sends it to 342. You can say, boop, brighten the screen. Boom, it brightens the screen. I could do all this cool stuff, you know, by just hitting the button. But I noticed it was not acting right. I'm like, what's going on? Well, my wife said there was this clear little plastic thing blocking the signal. And when we pulled that little clear plastic thing off, man, it just works beautiful now. My question is to you, is there something that is blocking your signal to heaven? Is there something that's between you and Jesus is there something you need to remove out of your life in 2018 so you and God can talk again? Are you hearing me? So you guys can communicate again through prayer so you can hear from the Lord and so he can hear from you simply because you moved something that was between you and him. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it's your choice. I could have let the little clear thing on there or I could have peeled it off. It was my choice, and I chose to remove it. And how many of you guys know it just made TV life better? Can I get an amen? I love it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew, I hope I talked y'all into the smart TV. But better yet, I hope I talked you into getting closer to Jesus. Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody. Watch this. Ah, I'm so out of time. Let me just let me just hit this, this uh, two little quick things. Watch this. Joshua 24, 15. I know I'm out of time. Let me just, I just, let me just read this to you. It preaches itself. It says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day. Tell your neighbor this day. Don't wait for tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. This is a new year. It's a new start. Choose this day. Can I get an amen? Whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the, the, the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me, watch this, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Can I get an amen? I don't want to serve me, myself, and I. I want to serve Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in 2018. Amen. Woo. Amen. Listen to me, making better choices, listen to me, will cause you to have a better new year. Amen. The best year of your life. Watch this. Let me just hit number two and I'm about to close out. Tell your neighbor the choice is yours. Watch this. The little things you choose to say and do today can make a big difference tomorrow. Did y'all hear that? The little things you choose to say and do today can make a big difference tomorrow. And I'm not going to be able to preach this whole point. But listen, me, that point alone preaches. Let, let God speak to you. Let me just give you the scripture. I'm going to give you Proverbs 18, 21. Most of y'all know, but I want to give you the message. I just love what it says in the message. 
It says, words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit, you choose. Tell your neighbor, it's your choice. It's your choice. Watch this. This year, choose, listen to me, choose to speak what you want to see come to pass in your life. Did y'all hear me? Choose to speak what you want to see come to pass in your life. Can I get an amen? Come on, stop saying what you can't do and start saying what you can do. Stop saying it's impossible and start saying with God all things are possible. Stop saying, listen to me, you're not worthy and start saying that Jesus has made me worthy because of the blood of the Lamb. And stop saying you're not able when God says I am able to do exceedingly abundantly above more than you can ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works in you. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. This is good stuff. Amen. And so listen to me. I'm close with this. Choosing to do. Choosing to do. And I'm going to throw this in there. Choosing to say and do. How many guys, it's one thing to speak positive, and I think we should speak positive. Can I get an amen? You got to allow me a little time for this. I got to get this out. Because I don't want you to think this is just a positive some type of positive thinking or positive speaking sermon. No, 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 no. I do believe we need to speak positive, but I also believe we need to speak the word. Are you hearing me? So I'm all for speaking positive. I'm not against it, but but see, that's the world can do that. But as Christians, how many guys know we can do something even more powerful than that? We can speak the word. Are y'all hearing me? And how many guys know when you speak the word, that is supernatural power? got to throw that in there. I got to throw other word because because I want to speak God's. When I speak God's word, how many guys know it will open the door to promotion? When I speak God's word, it will release God's promises in my life. When I speak God's word, it will encourage me to live God's best life for me. Can I get an amen? So remember, the little things you choose to say and do today can make a big difference tomorrow. Watch this. Let's close out with this. Choosing to do the little things is often the ingredient needed to make a big difference in your life and the lives of others. See, I've heard me say that before. I'm going to say it again. Choosing to do the little things is often the ingredient needed to make a big difference in your life and the lives of others. How many of you guys know we live in a day, let's just be honest, we need to learn to show more grace and mercy. Are y'all hearing me? so out of time. But let me just say, we need to show more grace and mercy. Amen. And I'm, this is, what I'm preaching to you is something God has spoken to me. And I've asked the Lord, help me to show more grace and mercy. Help me to be more compassionate. I mean, it sounds so little, but it can cause a big result. Can I get an amen? I, I want to show more grace to, to, to my wife. I want to show mercy to people that might criticize even hurt my feelings. Can I get an amen? And how many of you guys know if I show more grace and mercy, it may seem so simple, but it'll come back as a big reward. A big reward. And I have to learn to do that because I'm going to be honest with you. Whether you're at the job, whether you're in your home, or even in church, people are sometimes just going to be people. And they're going to say things that just offend you them say things that hurt your feelings and, and sometimes we're not always going to agree can I get an amen but I really believe if we will show grace, mercy and we show love how many guys love this? would you show love I really believe those are the ingredients that make a big difference in our lives and in the lives of others though you may have hurt my feelings or even maybe even offended me listen to me, I'm not going to be on the defensive time. You ever notice when somebody hurts your feelings and they offend you a lot, you, every time they say something, you get real defensive? Are y'all hearing me? Come on, married folks. Y'all ain't being real. Your wife's always telling you to quit quit leaving the, 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 the toothpaste out on the counter. And, there, and, 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 you, and, and you, one day, all of a sudden, you're about to put it up, but you haven't put it up yet. She tells you, I told you not to leave the toothpaste out on the counter. You're already defensive. I know, woman! Come on, 
called somebody. We need to make better choices this year. <laughs> show a little grace, show a little mercy. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I believe it will come back and make a big difference in our life and in the lives of others. Let me close. I'm out of time. Can I get an amen? I can't finish it. Did y'all receive this morning? Come on, can I get an amen? Come on, amen, amen, amen. We're about to uh, have communion this morning, but before we do, I would uh, ask those of you who would be uh, the ushers, if you can go ahead and bring the communion table out, you could do that. Amen, amen. But I want to share this with you. Two things. One, maybe you say, Pastor, this this year, this year, maybe you feel like you, you, you last year it wasn't a good year for you. Maybe you feel like you've drifted away from God. Maybe you're in here and you know you've backslid. Maybe you're in here and you say, Pastor, this this day, today, if I were to leave and if I were to die, I don't know where I'd spend eternity. I want you to know what the Word says. The Word says if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. And I believe the best decision, the best choice you'll ever make in life is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And so today, make that choice. Make that decision. Say, today, I'm coming back to you, Lord, if you're backslidden. If you ain't here and you've never surrendered your life to the Lord, say, today, today, not tomorrow, today, Lord, I'm going to surrender my life to you so you can make all things new. And so if you're in here this morning and you say, Pastor, that's me, I need to get my heart right with God. I want to make sure I'm heaven bound. I want an encounter with God's love and grace and mercy. I want to know I'm forgiven. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Can I see your hand? Anybody at all? Anybody? I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. A lot of hands up. I see your hands. I see y'all do lift them up one more time. High for Come on, one more time. Come on, don't be ashamed of the name of Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Call upon his name. Y'all can lower your hands down. Church, I'm gonna ask you to join me in this prayer. Everybody repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord, today I receive your love your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. Lord, I surrender my life to you. Come into my life. Make me new and help me to live for you every day in every way. I believe I'm heaven bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all give them a hand. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah.